Callum came to us because his previous support was breaking mm. down. You know, um, you know, his tenancy was under threat because he carried about a range of behaviours that caused people to be concerned, particularly around noise and banging and things. And he was in a, a flat that I think clearly wasn't particularly suitable. So he moved to the house um, that he has now on uh, March of 2013. Um, but with essentially exactly the same support package. So he had mm. staff with him 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, one-to-one support staff, all, all day, every day. But again, with this key fascinating exception that he went to voluntary work three days a week mm-hmm. and didn't have any staff with him when he went there. Um, and when he went there, he was this wonderful, mature, responsible, thoughtful young man. But at home, things continued to be really pretty challenging at times. And they could be really challenging <laughs> at times. And in honesty, they could be scary at times. You know. But we started, I think, to learn some real interesting lessons, particularly from some of these behaviours and, and taken from that, that real belief that we have that when people behave in ways that scare people or challenge people that they're trying to tell us something. And there was a few things that we started to really notice. One was, as I say, staff had to leave sometimes because, you know, the things just weren't stay for them to stay. Um, but one of the things that really fascinated me was Callum came to us with a reputation as somebody who would never cook, who would never clean, who wouldn't do his own washing and things. And that was absolutely true while the staff were there. As soon as they went away, when they came back an hour later, there would be Callum getting on with his, pulling the laundry out of the washing machine, having cooked his lunch. <laughs> so again, that was a really kind of, I think, interesting first lesson. But I think we, I came in the view really quickly that actually Callum's behaviours are essentially telling us I really resent this. When we went away, actually, he became much more productive and all of these labels kind of fell away. I thought, okay, actually, this service seems to be actively disabling him. And that probably takes us up to where, I don't know if that's a good point to pause, because then we're probably moving to when when we started to came to yourselves and said, is this somebody that we could include in the the pilot? You think with a bit of imagination, a bit of creativity, focused on what his outcomes are, maybe we could do some stuff really differently here. You know, he was very clear mm-hmm. that he wasn't viewed in that way and he wanted to be seen as somebody who was you know, able and competent. So we proposed a few things. We said essentially we think we need to get rid of the vast majority of this one-to-one sport. Health is really important to Callum and his weight is really important to Callum, so actually why don't we get my personal trainer? Um, and he's been working with that personal trainer for must be eight months now, if I forget when it's, um, and has lost three stone. As Diana says, we sound, one of the first things we did was it soundproofed his house, mm-hmm. completely soundproofed it top to bottom as a one-off payment, and there's not been a, a complaint from a neighbour <laughs> since. That's been enormously mm-hmm. successful. Um, and one of other Callum's uh, real kind of goals was that he was keen to set up his own business. He'd had this idea for having a car washing business, um, and the idea was that he's a really very small amount of the budget, you know, I mean, small hundreds of pounds, you know, to kind of, you know, seed that, you know, in terms of buying materials and, and training and that kind of thing. There were some challenges of getting buy-in from everybody around the room mm. of actually, there were big risks to be taken in rethinking his service. People were anxious about him not having a sleepover. They were deeply mm. anxious about saying to Callum, you take your medication rather than us supervise it. People were nervous about cutting the hours so much. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of anxiety and um, worry around the table. And I think what I've really learned from this pilot, because it hasn't worked for everybody, yeah. and I think where it's worked, there's been really, really good relationships, there's been trust and there's been confidence. And that's meant that across the system, as it were, that's been part of the mm-hmm. DNA of the pilot. Um, and I think, Sometimes people think of SDS or, or, or any of the options as a, as a funding mechanism, but actually this is a fundamentally different way of doing things, isn't mm. it? It's about um, letting go of control, taking mm. risks, rethinking traditional models. Mm-hmm. And I think what, well, to me, Callum's story is, is, is as much about how you work differently. Mm and collaboratively. So there's two learning points for me. One, we shouldn't exclude anybody. Everybody Mm -hmm. uh, should be able to avail themselves of the opportunities Mm -hmm. associated with self-directed support. But it's also about having sufficient trust in your provider. Uh, Relationships are key. You know, the Mm -hmm. relationship Mm -hmm. uh, with Thistle has been built up over a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, And it has involved personal contacts. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, and kind of confidence building mm-hmm. uh, and I think that's kind of been pretty critical mm-hmm. to to saying well let's give it a try. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the interesting things is just the way you talk about it Stephen, talk, talk about Callum's case, that 
the amount of knowledge that you acquire about it, the, the extent to which you get to know Callum. Yes. You can tell yeah, us these things, so. which actually yeah. no social worker is going to be in a yeah. position Absolutely. to do yeah. because, because it, you know, it's part of the assessment care management function is really that you know an assessment is a function, it might be a couple of meetings or whatever, but a lot of the knowledge that you developed about things clearly aren't working and yeah, when, when nobody is there, he does cook his own meals, you're yeah. only going to know from being yeah. on the ground with him and, I, and that, that's something we really need to think about. As a provider, I, I think you you actually need to be able to get on and make decisions and be flexible and keep um, the people's lives aren't static. So I think the, the the lovely bit about option two is the ability to be flexible. But actually, I think you need to then accept that things are going to probably move much more quickly than sometimes the system feels comfortable with in terms of sanctioning mm -hmm. or or taking decisions. So it did take us a while, didn't yes. it? You know, and there's, there's a tendency almost to blame SDS for budget mm -hmm. uh, problems. You know, the, the, it's SDS that's creating them, when the reality is that we're actually in a transitional phase, you know, where we probably do need to double fund some things. Mm -hmm. uh, now, given the financial pressures that everyone's under, you know, we can't sustain that. So I think, uh, you know, providers uh, and councils are, are kind of going to have to come to some way of agreeing by how much do we reduce our traditional spend each year to support uh, mm -hmm. more creative approaches? But there has to be this balance, you know. And so, so it's a, it, the national strategy is a ten-year strategy. We're only part of the way through that, um, and I think you know there's been funding put in at the start of that to help move things forward. But actually, some of that change that we need to make is only kicking in. Yes. In now, and that is more difficult for councils. So, you know, authorities like us that have used some of the money we have from the Scottish Government to pump prime things to try and develop innovative working. And, and then, you know, this is the point at which we do additional funding from Scottish Government's reducing. This is the point at which the double running kicks in mm. rather, than, rather than in, in the run up to sure. April 14th. I mean, we've launched the individual service fund agreement, mm -hmm. and all that really does at this stage is provide some governance around the management of service users money by providers but certainly I think Edinburgh is very clear that we are going to have to learn uh, about the the kind of thinking behind just the, that agreement mm -hmm. and it will be about how much we can give up control mm -hmm. uh, yeah. of what will be quite substantial amounts of money you know and that we pass them over and that we we are uh, kind of willing for people to take their own decisions about what's best for them and for a number of professionals, that will be quite a hard ask. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's about understanding the difficulties for the professionals, but not losing sight of the need to transfer choice and control yeah. uh, to those 25,000 people and away from the bureaucracy that inevitably mm -hmm. is a council. And there's a massive challenge for providers mm -hmm. on the other side there, mm -hmm. which is about um, being flexible enough, thinking differently, because I think even it'd be fair to say that some of the new people that you're supporting have got big, uh, again, risk issues. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes that comes right at the forefront and mm -hmm. starts to take over everything. And there's been lots of discussions, you know, about how, how to be more creative about that and how to see it as an individual service fund, but how you actually change your thinking and change the way that you, instead of just putting in and the support hours yeah. and, and thinking in that way. So the challenge is to, sure. to mm -hmm. absolutely two way, but I think having that in place just massively changes the whole self opportunities for self-directed support. And that's my big thing, really. That if you don't use option two, and people don't s get you know, work on these things from both perspectives, and um, then the opportunities for people around self-directed support is yeah. so much mm. smaller. A lot of his story is based on the fact that he's such a negative reputation. And so talking about that is actually quite tough, isn't it? If you think about being able to stand up and say, this is the person that I was seen as, and this is the person that I want to be, or this is the person that I, I am in reality, and that I want other people to recognise me as. So at first he was really shy, and we were just very pleased that he was even in the room. So that was the kind of first event. But once he'd done that, and he came, and the Thistle staff were there as well, and Moira was there, but once Callum was part of that, it was almost like he was kind of hooked. And for us, who'd worked with Callum a bit, we knew that that was absolutely focusing on his goals anyway, which was about seeing himself as a different person, being able to um, get away from that label that's been 
you know, I'm really for, for his life so far, even though it's, he's young.